Hey, oh my gosh. Okay, we're on to another episode of the Love, Life, and Business podcast. Today, I talk about celebration and men and women and children and elders and how everyone has that need for the sense a sense of belonging. But also, we forget that people want to be there to share their energy with us, to inspire us and help and support us and help us to feel belonging. I do shed a few tears as I do. I mean, I'm pregnant and a hormonal, but in such a good way because I'm here and I get to share with you guys these experiences. But it's all about celebration. It's about sharing the energy, positive, negative, finding a balance between the masculine and feminine, finding a balance in life, in business, in love, in all of the things that make us who we are so that we can get to our best selves and inspire others and encourage others to do the same. It was a really, really fun recording because I touched on a lot. I hope that it will be helpful to you. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the intro. And then again, remember, subscribe, give me a review. I'd love to know what you think. Follow me on social media if you haven't already, because I want to have that conversation. I love the back and forth. And I end with, in this podcast, silence is golden, but conversations can change the world. So let's dig in. Thanks again for joining me. Life is full of surprises, excitement, joy, and struggles, but you don't have to do any of it alone. Welcome to the Inspired Love, Life, and Business Podcast. My name is Min Din, mama to almost three incredible children. I'm a major cheerleader and contributor to my tribe, and I'm a lover of all things positive, creative, and inspiring. I love the threes too, as you can imagine. Join me as I discover and share new and powerful ways to be inspired through stories of hope, courage, and love. We'll get to know some amazing people in my circle and have conversations with powerful dominating in their fields and specialties. And I can't promise that you're going to leave without shedding a tear or feeling so ready to start living the life of your dreams. All right, are you ready? Let's get inspired. Hello, good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Inspired Love, Life, and Business podcast made for you with the intention to inspire you every day to show up in your fullest way and fullest manner to embrace love, life, and business. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Nin, for those of you who do not know me or if you're new to this podcast. And my goal is what I just said. I'm here for that very reason. And I used to be very scared, scared in so many ways. And not just one time in life, of course, as all of us dip and we ebb and flow and we dip and we rise, the whole ride goes up and down with life, right? Things get hard and then it gets easy. And then when it gets hard again, you wonder how it was ever so easy and then vice versa. Today, it's all about celebrating you and all of those wins all of those dips, those highs and those lows, because they all got you to exactly where you are today. And I do mean celebrate. Celebrate if you have to get up out of your seat, dance if you're in the car, if you have the opportunity to pull over or just bounce in your seat. Oh my gosh, life is so exciting. And I know that this isn't something maybe we can do in every single second of the day, something we can celebrate at every single moment, but it is so worth it. And it brings me back to a few things that I've been reminded of and I have learned in terms of where you want to be, the kind of frequency you want to share with the world, the energy that you want to bring about whenever you step into a room or when you meet someone new or when you look in the mirror. How do you start your day? How do you set it up? What does that celebration look like? So today I want to touch on the old, the young, the male counterparts and our the females and our future and our elders. I want to touch on just about the different age groups, the different people. 
<laughs> and the reason why is because I am 34. As of this recording, I'm 34. I'm going to be 35 later this year. And looking back at my younger self, I really, and I've heard a lot of women say this, and I wish I could understand and know more about how men feel, but they want to wrap their arms around her, tell her that she's going to do magnificently. She's going to blossom into this beautiful lady who has reached so many different goals that she never imagined she could. She's going to touch the world in ways that she never knew how. And she's going to do things that she never even envisioned was possible. And that says so much. And if the children that we're around now get reminded of that, and know of the possibilities and of everything that they are capable of. And they're able to dig within themselves and try new things to explore and find out what they love and really work on what they do well. The world would be a different, completely different place. And I say this too, because I've mentioned before, my culture has this way of suppressing creativity and individuality because it's so much easier to work as a community and as a whole and as one unit, which I so believe in. Absolutely. It takes all of us, but it takes each individual to create the whole. And that is so, so necessary. And it's so worth nurturing and getting out. So I'm going to start today with my women, my goodness. And I will say for you, if you are a lurker, and when I say lurker, let me go ahead and explain. If you are out there and you're taking in all of this goodness, all of this beautiful energy from the people that you follow, maybe it's Rachel Peterson, maybe it's Oprah, maybe it's Shailene Johnson. Amy Porterfield, Coach Glitter, whoever it is in your world who's inspiring you and bringing out all of the energy that you encapsulate every day, but you don't share your own story and you don't have your own, start your own conversations and you're not building your brand, your empire, your business. I'm talking to you. If you have never once commented or reacted to the people who have truly helped you to encapsulate the best within yourself, I'm talking to you. The moment that you let someone know that they've inspired or encouraged you in any way, you will feel the energy return to you. And it's so lovely. I say this from experience because I have been that lurker. As I've discussed, we have ebbs and flows and dips and highs in our lives. And when you're in a dip, you feel the need to hide. I've been there and I've hidden and I've hidden and I've gotten darker and deeper in the need to be in myself and getting lost and thinking that there's no way out. And I'm getting a little bit of inspiration here, finding a little bit of hope there, finding the right people to bring me and give me just a little bit of light so that I can sustain this darkness in which I have found myself in. But if you can hold on to that light, if you reach out to anyone who has given you any kind of of inspiration and let them know that they have helped you to see the spark and the joy in life, there's a good chance you're going to be able to pull on to that light, turn it into a rope and climb yourself out of that hole, of that darkness, of that place of hiding. I know this because I've been there so often, less often now because I know how to find the light. I know how to hold on to it. I have ways of re-inspiring and reinvigorating myself. So let's figure out what that is for you. Is that going through photos of people and places that you love? Creating a vision board? Is that a deck of affirmation cards? Is that going through quotes that really touch you deeply that people have shared with you. You should have a collection of those things. You have you should have a collection of quotes that get you up. You should have a collection of videos that just really give you all the juices to celebrate life and bring you back to the youth that 
radiates joy and emanates love and gives you that inspiration to come back and start a conversation, share with just one person, hey, I've been really feeling this way, but I'm ready to get back in this I'm ready to enjoy life again. Have a place that you can go to, have a person or people that you can rely on to encourage you to get back to who you are and who you're meant to be. So for my women out there and for the men who experience that, because I know you do too, you don't communicate it near as much as we do. We love to talk. We're always sharing, right? And it's it's something that we all experience as humans. No one is perfect. No one's always going to be happy and no one's always in a dark place. It's There is the good and the bad. There's that balance that creates life. And some people don't see it as a balance. Some people choose specific ways that they handle and deal with things. And that's perfectly fine. Whatever it is for you, whatever it looks like, whatever you need to get into to find that spark and that light again is something you should definitely box up metaphorically or physically. Have a specific box you can go to. I have a someone I love and hold so dear to me. And she introduced me to her smile file, which means anything that she finds online, she has a folder that she saves if it brings her joy and lights her up. And she knows if she ever needs that extra boost, that extra kick, she goes to that box, uh, that folder, and she is lit up by puppy pictures or baby smiles and videos of encouragement. And that's what I would love to share with you today. Start creating that. What is your smile file? What does that look like? And so that's for all my women. If you're out there, share that energy. And if you're finding love and light and joy and sparking what someone else is doing, use some of that for yourself. Let them know how they're helping you to get back to your best self. And that mutual circle will continue to grow. And then people will do the same for you. And they're going to say, holy cow, Shannon. Oh my gosh. I didn't know this about you. I've been through that too. And that's so helpful to know that's how you got out. It helped me to get out of this situation that I'm in. I've been struggling for so long and there's so much beauty in that. I encourage you to start. And if it's not sharing your own story today, it's letting someone else know how they've helped you and what they've done whether big or small, because it all matters. It all matters to us. When a child comes to us and say, oh, I love your shirt or, oh, I that color is so beautiful on you or your hair is so nice. Even if it's not a child, someone else and shares a compliment. It means the world, does it not? And it's just a tiny little blip in your day, but it lights you up. It gives you that pep in your step. And so take the time to do that. Share that energy for my men. And I love and I appreciate that there are so many other dynamics in this world with who you can be, who you want to be, how you want to be recognized. But I'm going to keep it simple and stick it stick with my men, my women, my children. But know that I'm talking to all of you. I have love for everyone. And I've grown up that way. I've always known since I was little that I've never wanted to discriminate. I've never wanted to leave anyone out. And part of the reason why is because I've always wanted to belong. As humans, we have this innate need and desire to belong. Therefore, it's so easy for us to help others to belong. That's what comes natural. And if that's not what's happening with you, if it's not natural for you to feel the need to help others, to feel a sense of belonging, then that's something you can revisit. Ask yourself questions questions and really dig deep as in why, why is this not the case? Why do I feel the need to separate myself or separate these specific individuals? Anyway, that's going on a tangent, but I bring this up specifically because I I am so inspired by women and I am out there because living the life of a woman, I can relate and I can speak to that aspect, right? But I haven't spoken about the men in my life who inspire me in so many ways. My dad, for example, I've shared one post on my Facebook about how I love to recommend friends and family or anyone who is in business. My dad carries a ton of business cards. I think he still does today in his wallet so that he can share about 
the businesses that his friends are in, whether they're an optometrist or they're a technician or they are a mechanic, whatever it is, he is willing and ready to give you a name, give you a number here. I know this person, he's great in his Vietnamese accent. And he just loves and celebrates everyone in his life. And because of that, and he's done that so long, everyone wants him to be a part of every milestone in their life, every big celebration. He's there. He's there with my mom and they both do the same. And it's just so lovely. And I'm so grateful that I have that to learn from my dad, my spouse, my spouse is such an incredibly hard worker. He doesn't quit. He never gives up. And it's these things that people, and I hear a lot of intuition workers and manifestors, and they say the feminine and the masculine. And I'll be honest, that is not my specialty. I love it. And I sit within spirit and I know that I'm connected to the universe, but embracing the masculine and knowing how it can benefit you And being able to master the masculine as well as the feminine, no matter what ethnicity, what gender you claim, whatever it is, knowing the differences and how that can build you in who you are and how you can take advantage of the different aspects will make you feel more complete and more whole because you'll be able to accomplish so much. I say this also from experience because I've learned from so many great people out there teaching the aspects of femininity and masculinity and how it takes us all. And it's so interesting because when you look at what I shared, you'll see all of these women lighting me up and lifting me up and encouraging me to do more. They engage and they comment. You'll see a lot less men. And I will share a stat with you that I found completely astonishing. I will be honest, because when I look at the stats, you would think that the majority of the people who see my content, my stuff that I share on social media content is just what we marketers call the information that we create, that we share with our audience, right? Whether that be a quote, a video, a picture, it's content, things that we put out. So I honestly thought it was probably an even slip split between men and women, because that's what meta and the different algorithms and platforms use. They split it by men and women and then age and location. So I thought it would either be an even split or definitely hire women than men because my content speaks to women or so I thought. There are twice as many men who follow me than there are women in terms of viewing my content, listening to what I have to say and reading what I share. And the men are the ones, and I don't mean the men from other foreign countries who are like, oh, show me this, let me see that, and are being derogatory. No, I no, I mean real men in my life who I've known, who I've gone to school with, who have, have interacted with great men who have tagged me or DM'd me and said, or in person told me, I watch your videos, I listen to you, and I read your quotes, and I see your story. It it brings them joy and it inspires them. And to me, I'm blown away because I don't feel like that conversation is had enough for you dudes out there who are who are struggling or finding so much success and so much joy that you want to celebrate, but you feel like you can't. We're here for you. We're here for you. We really wouldn't be here without you. I want to know that you are celebrated just as much as we are. And I absolutely love it. And you know, when you're in the business space, when you're doing any kind of marketing, they tell you, you need a niche down. You need a niche down. You need to talk to a very specific audience. You need to talk to that one person, look them in the eye and know exactly who they are. Well, you know what I've said, I've never been the person to exclusively choose or single out one demographic, one group of people. And I still am not. That's never been something I've acquired. And I struggle with it a lot, to be honest with you. When all of these coaches and mentors, as I'm growing my business, are like, oh, you got to, you have to niche down. And and yes, there are certain things I want to niche down in. But when I'm sharing messages of joy and inspiration, I don't want to niche that down. Why? Because we all need the same love. We all want to feel the same sense of belonging. We all want to stay away from the feeling of shame, of guilt, of anger. Yet I'm here to remind you, we want to embrace all of those emotions and to share it. For those of you who are listening, 
whether you're a man or a woman or a child or an adult, if you don't have someone to talk to, to share your struggles with, to share your joys with, to share those dips with, find someone. There's got to be one person you can trust, one person start that conversation. It's the same thing as taking that first step to your new business. It's the same thing as taking that first step to writing your book, to being published, to doing anything new, taking that first step to skiing, playing a sport, learning an instrument, sharing yourself is just as important is is a skill set and not all of us have it. Do you know someone in your life who needs to have that conversation? You just feel it. Not because they've said, oh, I need to have a conversation, but you know that they've started to retreat. They haven't been spending as much time with people as they used to, or if there's someone who didn't ever used to, to begin with, but you, you feel that you can lock into that tuition with yourself and with anyone. If you just take a moment to think there is someone there that you can reach out to, to pick up the phone or pick up your phone and send them a text just to check in on them. I know that it would mean the world. I have friends, especially guy friends who I check on regularly. And again, it's because they don't feel safe having that conversation about their struggles about when they need help because we expect the men in our lives, the masculine energy to be strong, to be able to hold us together sometimes. And sometimes it's us helping them. But if they don't know that they can rely on us, if they don't know that we love and support them too, they feel alone and they can't have that conversation. And to think that there are people in my life who feel that way, men that I love and care about, it hurts. And I want that conversation to change. I want that the door to open. It should be a give and take, a back back and forth. I'll share that I recently talked to someone who we've excluded from our lives because we gave and gave and gave so much and it wasn't being reciprocated. And so we've had enough and we've moved on. It's sad. It's not something that we love or enjoy cutting people out of our lives, but this life is a journey and we want to be able to make the most of the energy that we have to give because yes, love is absolutely unlimited, but as with anything, you want to put it where the energy makes sense and you're getting the most out of it. You want to nurture it and help it to grow. If you see that it's not growing after you're being seeped of your own energy and your own love, it's time to move on and to seek a different source that you can provide care and nurture to, that you can see grow, that you can see blossom. And I mean this in multiple ways. I mean this within every new venture that you take, the business that you started, the business that you're going to start, the feelings that you're going to share, the words that you're going to use to communicate to the person that you love that you know needs it at this time. I'm starting with the ready knows again because this, this subject is so important to me. I will have a friend on later on as a guest who wants to have that discussion with me about relationships and about how it's more acceptable for women to talk about their struggles and relationships. It's more acceptable for them to say, oh, he's doing this. He's not doing that. And even if we are owning what we're doing wrong, we're not giving credit where credit is due. And that is often very well needed as well from from every dynamic, from both people involved in the relationship, or if you have multiple, however that works for you. But it's, we need to be recognized. We need to be shown love and care and understanding. And when we have to suppress our hurt, our pain, because we feel like we can't talk to our significant other or our mom or our best friend when we feel like we don't have anyone to talk to. It hurts and it compounds and it it really crushes who we are as a human. And when it happens enough, you lose your sense of self and it's so hard to rediscover that light. And I say this and I hope that you feel it. I say it with experience because it took absolute consistency for me to get to where I am today. And I love it. I love the feedback that I'm getting. I love how it's helping you all, but it was a lot of struggle. It was a lot of struggle, a lot of time spent swallowing, wallowing in my own despair, my own self-hatred, my own inability to get out of thinking 
those things that were so self-defeating. And that's how I learned the skills to create a small file or know that I have people that I can rely on, a community that I can go to, to pick myself back up slowly, but surely. And I want you to find that community too. I want to be a part of that community. That's why I do what I do, because I know how much it hurts. I know how deep and dark it can get. And how meaningful it is when you can find the light in yourself and in other people and how powerful that light is when it turns into a rope that helps you to crawl out of that pit that you've created for yourself. And I just want you to remind, I want to remind you that there are people out there, so many people who are working so hard and they are struggling to do it consistently. They're struggling to show up, but they're doing it because they know that you need it. They're doing it because they are getting those messages. They are getting those small reminders that it's making a difference. And that in itself is the inspiration that they need to continue to fight through the hard stuff and to show up and to continue to do good work, to be good humans, to share their stories of struggle and how they moved beyond that. And I feel like this is a good time to bring up younger me, younger you, your past. Even if you're a 12 year old listening to this last year or last month or last week, you've struggled Even if you're the most popular kid in school, you've struggled. Even if you put a smile on your face every single day and you're super happy, you know what struggle feels like. And growing up, I was always the super happy-go-lucky, cheery girl. And I wouldn't say that I was super popular, but I radiated a joy and a cheerfulness. I loved people. I was always... I was always talking to everyone. My best friend is friends with me now because she was new to our neighborhood, our school. And I went right up to her and welcomed her and made her feel like she really belonged. That was when I was 11. And we are best friends to this very day. I have that need to help others to feel a sense of belonging because that helps me to feel like I belong. That helps me to feel better about myself and it helps me to become a better person. And I've known this all my life. Oh boy. Sorry. Um, So with that being said, everyone at every age will experience struggles for the children who are going to school school nowadays in this environment where they have so much information coming at them, not just what they're learning in school, but what, as soon as they're done or even while in school, they're consuming all of this stuff on social media, in the media, in entertainment. It's overwhelming. And I can't imagine what it would feel like to not know how to sort those things out, to understand that it is you who controls what you consume. It is you who controls what you are being programmed in your brain, because like I've mentioned in a previous podcast, we are made to be programmed, but we get to choose that programming. So if you can help your children to program themselves with the things that they can control in life and bringing in all of the positive things that reinforce how much they're capable of instead of how much they stand out and don't belong, the more power they have to grow, the easier it is for them to reach where they want to reach and for them to be able to create and find their voice. There is there is a lot of negativity in the world, but there's also so much good. What are we focusing on? What are we ourselves sharing? What are they seeing in us? How are we building that light and that path for them? Being very aware of the things that we say, the things that we do, the actions that we take, And the things that we listen to, what we consume, what we read, what we listen to on the radio, whatever it is, being aware of that in itself is so helpful. What kind of books are you reading or listening to? Who are you learning from? They see that in you. They see that so much more than what you actually speak to them, what you're trying to teach to them, when you're lecturing them, when you have to sit down and have a one-on-one that's not near as much impact as what they see you doing what they experience in your world when you're not paying attention to yourself again from my experience in the past when I was younger going back to everyone seeing this cheerful girl I would go home and wonder why I would get so sad wonder why I didn't love myself wonder why I felt so fat all the time, why I didn't feel like I belonged, why I had all of these 
friends, but didn't feel like I could really connect or understand anyone or that anyone understood me. And that's for so many of my friends who I did go to school with. It's hard for them to even fathom that that's what I went through. But I didn't. I wasn't seeking help. I didn't know to. I wasn't trying to find anyone to talk to because I didn't know that it was normal. I thought that something was really wrong with me. And so I struggled in my relationships, in my previous relationships when I was younger and growing up. And there was such a huge need for attachment and this huge sense of I have to have somebody else to make me whole because without someone loving me, without someone showing me care and affection, I am incomplete. And with all of that, I've done so much work to understand. And you, I know you guys have heard this so often. It comes and starts, it comes from and starts with you. In order to show love, you have to love yourself. This is a conversation that we still have as adults. I hear people in their 50s and 60s still talking about this, 70s, 80s. It is a sense of self-love before you can love anyone else, before you can have healthy relationships. You need to find that love within yourself. And, and everyone deserves love. Everyone deserves to belong. Everyone deserves to be able to find that within themselves. And everyone has a different way of exploring that though. And I will tell you, for me, it's reading and listening to books that really resonated with me. And I will bring back Jaring Greatly from Renee Brown. She is so brilliant. And then I also love The Big Leap from Gay Hendricks. I listened to that a couple of times as well, because it reminds us that the limits that we're putting on ourselves, holy cow, that's so fake. We have no limits. We can do and think whatever we want. And here's the kicker is when things get really good, this is what's more most powerful to me is when things get really good, we tend to think, oh my gosh, I don't deserve this. What is going on? And then we self attract bad things because we're like, holy cow, this is too good to be true. I don't deserve this life. And things come crashing down or immediately you get into an argument or maybe a car accident, you know, something that takes you down from that high that you've created. But if you realize that you deserve all of this goodness, you deserve all of the positivity that's happening around you. You deserve to win the lottery if that's the case or for your business to go really well. You deserve to be that bestseller. You deserve to be the best piano player in the world. If you know that you deserve it and you know that you're sitting within that frequency of winning and doing well in life, you fully embrace and know within your whole entire being that you deserve it. There's never a need to come down from that high. There's never a need to get out of that world. Yes, things are going to happen in life. Of course, you know, sometimes you're, you might encounter, okay, you might spill something on your clothes, super small. You might still get in the accident, but the way that you view it, the way that that you see it and the way that you see the positivity surrounding it or why it happened or how it happened, or maybe you met someone wonderful when it happened, you are able to recognize and see the light and the beauty out of it instead of focusing on, oh my gosh, poor me. Why did this happen? Why me? When you start to reframe what happens in life to empower you and you recognize that it's all happening to help you to become better and you view it in that different way and you can use that to teach and inspire others around you, especially my moms and dads, okay? If you're out there with your children, remind them that every moment is an opportunity to recognize and see the beauty in things. Again, yes, absolutely take in what happened, process that anger or process the feelings and emotions because we're going to feel sad. We're going to feel angry. Those Emotions, if you've ever seen sit inside out, they are very necessary. We need to embrace those feelings and sit within that. But once we're done sitting in that, allow the light to come back in and bring that joy back and recognize, okay, so what did I learn from this? What did we all learn from this? How did this affect you, honey? Let's talk it out. How do we avoid this in the future? And if we can't avoid it, how are we going to deal with it in a better way? Have those conversations. I encourage you. Have those conversations with the younger people in your life, your lives, the older people in your lives, the men, the women, everyone, because everyone needs it. Anyone who matters, who means anything to you deserves to have a conversation with you about how you feel about them and 
You deserve to know how they feel about you because all relationships are worth nurturing. All people are worth the love and the care and the belonging. And that brings me to the last set of people that I haven't touched on. My my elders, your elders, people who came before us, who are paving that path for us, who I know are doing such a wonderful job because man, they work so hard. I will tell you their work ethic is different than I've ever seen and known before. And it is such a huge way of encouraging me to continue to show up at my best. My work ethic and the way that I show up is going to be very different than what they embraced and what they were taught. But I learned so much from them and from what they do and how they do things that it helps me to bring that balance into my life to help me to grow. And if you can look at your parents or your aunts or your uncles or your grandparents, if you still have them and ask questions, you can learn so much, not only about them, of course, but about who you are because they made you into who you are there, whether you know it or not, they are involved in that process. So the more that you can understand, the more that you know, the more that you can grow. I love that rhyme, but it's that whole process is so necessary. The more we know about ourselves, the more we can embrace the good, the bad, acknowledging what we can do, what we can have others do for us, because it's not our specialty. Recognizing all of those things help us to get to those points where we want to celebrate, where we want to enjoy life, where we want to step out, where we want to show more of ourselves. So bringing back this celebration, guys, celebrate yourselves, not just guys, girls, everyone. When I say guys, I mean everyone in general, but celebrate yourselves, celebrate every single tiny moment, every step that it takes. This podcast is almost at hundred downloads and I've done all of this by myself. And when I say that, I mean, I haven't shared anyone else's audience. I've just been really consistent because I want to have and craft something so good. And I know that while it's going slow, I can continue to work on it because I don't have millions of eyes on me and that's okay. But one day I will. And one day those millions of eyes can look back and see my previous episodes and know, okay, she definitely grew and she started messy, but she celebrated those messy moments. And I hope that you celebrate those messy moments as well and enjoy every single step, good, bad, ugly, beautiful, and share that energy with those people around you. Let them know how they're lighting you up how they're getting you closer to your dreams and your goals, how they're sparking that joy so that you can find that light, pull on that rope and get out of that hole when you need to. So let me know, share with me, connect with me on social media, hit the subscribe button so you can get the notifications every Wednesday when I come back to share more stories. I'm doing my first guest interview later this afternoon. And I'm so excited because she was the first person to reach out and say, I want to be a guest on your podcast, which meant the world, by the way, for someone who's starting out and doing something new. That's why if you take that moment to say, oh my gosh, and celebrate someone, even if it's not in the spotlight or in public, in the DMs, whatever it is, people resonate with that and they love it. You can bring joy. You can create joy. And the more of the joy that you create, the more you'll feel it within your heart and you can do even more of it. All right. So thank you so much for joining me again in this session. If you are a visual person and you want to view this, I do have the recording, the video recording on my YouTube. It does take a little bit longer to get out than the audio podcast, but it will be up there. If you feel inspired to subscribe and hit the notification on there, that would be awesome. I would completely love that because I'm all about branding. And until I get to hundred YouTube subscribers, I cannot change my name on YouTube and I can't have my own branding. The URL is a bunch of letters and numbers. And so I know that's small and a little vanity piece, but I love it. And I would so appreciate it if you subscribed. I'm still working on it. No official launch yet. I'm just building up consistency there as well, which is important to me now. I didn't know it before. Anyway, thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely Wednesday and I look forward to seeing you again next week and every week after with more inspiration, with more stories. And we'll be bringing on guests and people who you can resonate with and you can see and understand you're not alone on this journey into becoming your fullest self 
in love, life, and business. There's a quote too that I just learned that I created that comes from the old saying, silence is golden. Well, yes, silence is golden in the right times. But now that we are inspiring people to speak up and share their stories, silence is golden, but conversations can change the world. So with that being said, start the conversation with me on social media. I'd love to know where you're at, how you felt about this episode and what you would like to know and learn more of who you would love for me to speak with. If you know someone that you can share this with or know someone who should be on this podcast, please let me know. They can email me at nin at inspired lalavu. I just got that up and running. I'm super excited about it. But N-H-I-E-N at I-N-S-P-I-R-E-D L-O-L-I-V-U.com. And I'd love to see if they're a great fit and get them on the podcast. All right. Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me for another powerful conversation on all things positive, inspiring, enlightening, and powerful in relation to love, life, and business. I hope that you took something really important away from this conversation. Maybe you'll be able to take some action, but if you're not ready to end the conversation here, don't forget you can always join me on social media. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube at Inspired Lollibu. That's Inspired L-O-L-I-B-U for love, life, and business. Thank you so much again for listening. I so appreciate your support and I'd love to know your thoughts and comments. Leave them below or send me an email at nin, N-H-I-E-N, at rainbowreveal.com. I will read every single email that comes in and I am always on social in my comment section and replying and showing love again like i always say to my community and to my tribe uh, i love and support each and every one of you thank you so much for being here and supporting me we'll see you next time